What's going on guys? Fun of Thighs back again and welcome to a knife collection update video. It is August 21st of 2017 and this one was actually requested by a viewer named Jason. So Jason, here you go. And I do apologize. I wanted to get this one out much sooner, but I, I've really been putting it off because it's difficult to round up all your knives if they're in different locations, which a lot of mine are. I mean, they serve different purposes for me and they're in different bags, kits and cars. So I rounded up the vast majority. I mean, you're probably looking at 90, 95% of my knives right now. And these are just folders. We will transition to fixed blades towards the end of the video. And I'm going to try to follow a rough order of premium knives to more budget knives. I mean, I know I'm going to get some mixed up and honestly, I'll probably end up messing up some steel designations, some names, some companies, because it's a lot of info to remember. And I did not plan whatsoever. I grabbed the knives, threw them down on the table, and I'm going to go from strict memory on all the, the different things I like and don't like about them, but we'll just briefly touch on each. And if you guys saw my knife collection video from years past, I don't know when I put that out, but it was, it was quite some time um, ago. I had, I think, I believe I had more knives and I still have a ton of knives now. I mean, I am a, a knife review channel, but I had more back then, I think because I had more budget stuff and I, I think I did uh, more reviews on CRQTs, Kershaw's, the lower end Spydercos and things like that. I think my collection has um, shifted a little bit more towards quality and a little bit more away from quantity. I mean, just, just slightly here. I haven't bought a whole lot of new knives as of recently, but there's definitely some um, that you guys may not have seen or totally forgot about. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First one here is the VDK War Admiral. This beast of a cleaver, S35VN steel. Of course, VDK stands for Vlad Domazerov Knives. Titanium and just a gorgeous anodization on this one. It's kind of that blurple color. It's got tons of wear on it because I carry it quite a lot. I love this knife. It's very unique and it's one that's just never going to leave. Now, another knife from... VDK is the Faro. Similar materials here, but this is a bolster lock with dual carbon fiber bolsters. Very sweet action on this thing. Again, S35VN steel. Um, both of those are riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic ball detent. This has got a different finish. It's kind of that polished finish with that small sweeping Persian blade. This thing is sweet. It's a great um, formal uh, attire. EDC knife. It's just got a lot of class to it. I mean, it's definitely high quality. Uh, VDK knives are known for being just extremely unique. And I do like this one a lot. And then we go to the Wii Knives Natita. This one's fairly new to me. I'm still in the process of carrying it and reviewing. So I'm still carrying this one. I'm trying to um, get my feelings down about it. I've been liking it a lot so far. Again, this is a titanium frame lock flipper with S35VN steel two-tone blade on this one with a carbon fiber show scale that's some titanium behind it of course titanium frame lock does have a steel lock bar insert as did the previous ones great action on this thing good forward finger choil it's got a nice thumb ramp as well i've been really loving carrying this thing it's been seeing a lot of pocket time in the last couple of weeks the detent is a little stiff but i like it i really do i like the the design of this one as a whole both aesthetically and in hand um, and then we move to my beloved ZTs, and my favorite knife to the to this date actually is the ZT0220. It's an Onzo design, phenomenal action, stone washed drop point blade with a slight recurve, titanium frame lock flipper, S35 VN steel. Once again, uh, a orange, bright orange aluminum backspacer gives us a pop of color. I mean, I I just love nearly every aspect about this knife, and I have since the moment I got it. So this is still my favorite knife. Um, next is the ZT0801. This is a Rexford design. I have the black washed version. There is endless varieties of this knife. Um, ZT just continues. This has got junk still in it. I used this yesterday, I believe, to cut some, I don't know what that was, but <laughs> um, titanium frame lock flipper. And this has got LMAX steel. This is a an older ZT. So they've moved away from bowler steels, I believe, to carpenter and... Uh, crucible steels which are both usa made uh, but this thing has a phenomenal action it's a good all-around usa tough edc beater kind of knife and there's some beauty in it for sure um, but this isn't my favorite zt but it's definitely a high quality knife that i like a lot 
let's see here. Uh, ZT0456, Sinkovich design. Super space age futuristic. I love that aspect about it. Lots of blue color pops in this thing. An anodized clip, anodized aluminum backspacer, and that super cool pivot with all those colors. Again, two-tone blade. This is kind of that sheep's foot thing going on. This is CTS204P steel, which is some high quality stuff, very similar to M390. And then the amazing action on this thing, it just almost can't be beat. I mean, the VDKs have amazing actions just like this does, um, but that's probably the, the best action on a ZT that I own. And then this one is a close second for my favorite knife, and that's the 0095 in black wash. This thing is awesome. I love the shape of it, the, the constant sweeping belly. The ergonomics on this thing are phenomenal. This is a thinner knife for shorts. It doesn't have as quite a thick blade stock as the my other ZTs, and actually a lot of ZTs. Um, fairly thin handle here. Still beefy, still all USA made, and still very high quality. That's the 0095BW. And then a knife that I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone in the knife community loves. That's the PM2. This is really the jack of all trades knife. I don't, I don't know any other way to put it. It's it's good at everything. Everything I've needed this knife to do, it's been good at. It's not the best at everything, but it's good at everything. If I if I had to keep one knife in it, and somebody told me it would be the PM2, I'd be completely fine with that. And these things come in so many different flavors. I have a fairly basic version. It's a black coated S30V model with the Digicam G10 handle skills. They come in. Just, just about any flavor you'd want. And if you haven't tried a PM2, you've been on the fence about it, go ahead and try it. They are that good. And if for if whatever reason you don't like it, there's such strong support for that thing in the secondary market with different parts and, and things you could put on it, backspacers and clips and scales that you could sell that thing in an instant if you didn't like it. So just my two cents on that. Um, this knife is almost as good, and that's the Spyderco Manix 2. Um, this really, really threw me over the edge with my love with Spyderco. I wish I had many more Spydercos, but this is also a USA-made model. It's a Manix 2. Both of these knives are going to come from the mines of the Glesser family. Um, Eric and Sal Glesser, the owners of Spyderco. Wire clip on this one, FRCP handle scales, and this is, again, a fairly basic model. CTS BD1, uh, black coated with the black scales. Has the ball bearing lock, and just... It's just super functional, a little wide in pocket, but the ergonomics almost cannot be beat. Out of my folding knives, this is probably has um, the best or, you know, in the top three for ergonomics. Love this knife. It's seen ton of use. Probably never going to leave the collection as well. Now, I know that I'm probably skipping all sorts of, of insight that you guys want to know about each of these knives, but I, I have reviews on most of them. A couple of them are still in the process of me carrying them and using them, but most of these have reviews. So if you want to know how I really feel about the ZT0220 or the, the Spyderco Manix 2 or anything, just go ahead and search into my channel and you'll find a full review. So Kershaw Launch 2, they're USA made autos, CPM 154 steel. This is the OD green anodized handle. Aluminum, of course, that standard Skyline clip, super fast action, but the Launch 2 doesn't always lock up as you've seen there. Still love the knife. Uh, it's just not not carried as much as it should be, but I do like it quite a bit. It's nice and slim, it's nice and easy to carry, and it's really fast to deploy. This has got that standard kind of drop point. I believe they're up to seven models within the launch series, and they present really, really good value. Um, but if you're looking to get your first launch, go with the original, the Launch 1. Same steel, same handle material, but this one is kind of in that battleship gray, blacked out button, and an amazing blade, grind, size, action, everything. I love this blade. It's probably my favorite blade under $100. Um, and that's beating out the Manix 2 by just, just a hair. I mean, the, this launch one is phenomenal. Lots of positive reviews on YouTube about that as well. Moving on, a knife that is currently for sale um, or for auction. I don't even know if I'm going to continue with that. We might just put these up for sale individually. Is the Boker Wildcat G10 Scales Ball Bearing Flipper. It's got a very unique blade shape. It's it's half karambit in the handle, half tonto recurve thing going on here. Very attractive design. Um, deep carry clip, if you ex you know excuse the ring, um, but it's definitely a functional clip. Can be open in all sorts of different ways. Good ergonomics. I think this was designed as a fighting knife. 
Um, obviously, I did not use it as such, um, but a phenomenal action for the, I don't know, $80, $90 price point uh, with, I don't know if I mentioned, D2 tool steel on that. So uh, good steel on that as well. Here's the Buck Marksman that, Marksman that you guys haven't seen in forever. Um, 154 CM steel, very interesting locking system on this. This is the SLS, the strong lock system from Grant and Gavin Hawk. Black anodized aluminum handle scales with some interesting milling. Uh, deep carry clip, and this is the Tonto Marksman. It's not the original drop point, but I do love the finish on this. It shows wear pretty cool. It's got a Paul Boss, Paul Bose heat treat. Um, there's a couple of reasons why you guys haven't seen this knife in so long, and I'll get into that, and I'm sure in a different video, but I don't know how I feel about this one yet. It's still in the process of getting used and may even need to be repaired. I don't know, but... That is the Buck Marksman, the Tonto version. Here is my first actual quality pocket knife, and that's the Kershaw Blur, designed by Ken Onion, and this is the S30V model. Speed safe, equipped. This thing, <laughs> look at, this is when I, I tried to sharpen when I was younger and just totally ruined the finish on this blade. This thing has been my loyal companion for many years before I actually got into knives. This was in my pocket every day. Aluminum scales with, I believe these are called track tech inserts. They're kind of like grip tape. And this is some custom <laughs> skull um, clip that I got on Amazon that actually works quite well. Uh, but this thing has some issues for sure. It's a liner lock, um, but it, it served me well. And I think I still think it's a good pocket knife design. Um, for general utility stuff. Moving on, um, I believe this is my only, no, I have one other to fix blade. This is my only cold steel folder at the moment. This thing is just pure fun. It's the, the cold steel Spartan. It's over the top. Spartan is a Copus style blade shape. It's, it's big, it's ridiculous, it's over the top, and it is cool. That's all there is to it. It's fun. It, you can chop with it. It's got this really cool handle with these ergonomics. I mean, um, Cold Steel's quality that I've seen is still kind of there. The clip is subpar. Um, my thumb plate is loose. I mean, uh, uh, this thing is lacking in all sorts of departments, but really I can't, I can overlook those because this thing is just so damn awesome. It's got the triad lock. It's got, I think, grivery handle scales, CTS BD1 blade steel, which I like quite a bit. A nice finish on the blade. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't reviewed this thing and I, I don't know that I will or not. I don't, I don't think it sees quite enough use. I really just have fun with it. And honestly, if I, if I use it for any sort of woods tasks, I kind of remind myself that a fixed blade would probably be better. Um, but you know, whatever, <laughs> moving on. Uh, one of my favorite blades of all time, this is at the $60 price point or around there is the Kershaw knockout. Again, one of those kind of do-it-all knives, in my opinion. Speed safe equipped, both a flipper and a thumb stud opener. Anodized aluminum scales. Wow, aluminum scales with a sub-frame lock. Deep carry clip that is good at every corner of the knife. Um, I believe that's just a plastic backspacer. This thing is marred up. It's beaten up, and it's still lovely. I still love the crap out of this knife. One of those knives that's just not going to leave my collection unless I really need some cash. Uh, Real Steel E775 Griffin. Um, took a chance with Real Steel and I'm pretty glad that I did. This is on bearings with a plunge lock with a custom FWK ruined blade finish. Um, that weird clip. Again, this is anodized aluminum. Um, I think this is a harder aluminum than the rest of the knives I've shown you with aluminum scales. But super smooth action. Good all-around EDC knife, and it does have a secondary lock that prevents you from disengaging that plunge lock, which is kind of cool. So, really good pocket knife. I, I bet most things from Real Steel are going to be in that quality range, and those come in at like 50 bucks, and they're a good mid-range option in a world where you either buy budget or you buy premium, and Real Steel is kind of in the middle. Uh, here is, again, a custom ruined, oh, I'm sorry, custom FWK ruined Kershaw. <laughs> this is the Kershaw Emerson CQC 4K XL. Um, it's big. It's pretty badass, but I've kind of moved away from these sort of designs. Um, not intentionally. This has got a two-tone 8CR 13 MOV blade, steel frame lock, of course, Emerson design with the wave opener, thumb disc. Um, this thing originally had a, a spear point blade that I chipped a tip on. Uh, mess with those scales. You guys probably got enough of staring that ugly thing. 
Um, it's not ugly when it's new, I promise. It's a pretty decent knife when it's new, but I, I definitely jacked that up. I, I dabbled in the custom... <laughs> I don't even say customizing the, the knife ruining scene for a while. This is... What brand is this? This is a Bear and Sun. Is that what this is? I don't know what this is. It's my first butterfly knife. And it's it's a lot of fun for sure. I don't really know any tricks with it. I haven't really messed with it since about the week I got it. Um, I believe these are like zinc handles with some crappy blade steel. But really the materials don't matter as long as it doesn't fall apart. This is for pure fun. It's not a nice ballot song. It's just for me to kind of mess around with. Just like this knife. This was a gift. Um, this is a Lightning OTF knockoff. Uh, autos are completely legal in my state. I can use them. I can carry them. I can own them. But I never really had a whole lot of interest in the out the fronts because they're so damn expensive and I don't see the utility in them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you all have some auto phase in the future. Uh, but to me, these things are just fun and I've never, ever really used this knife. I've just kind of messed around with it. Um, but that's that. Here is the Kershaw Flourish, a new 2017 model. 8CR13 MOV blade steel, G10 carbon fiber handles. A liner lock, um, speed safe, flipper, I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, pretty standard Kershaw knife, but it's actually a pretty good one. Thin blade stock, slices pretty well, and overall, pretty good larger EDC knife. This thing is kind of deceivingly big. Um, it's not incredibly heavy or you know too big to throw in your pocket. It's just bigger than you might think it is. Hey, what do you know? Another custom FWK ruined knife. I really dabbled with the Dremel on this one. Um, I think I was trying to go for a lunar look on the handles with the the craters but of course i made them all the same size and it's just terrible i know i'm going to get judged for that pretty hard but that's a spider co persistence acr 13 mov blade steel zip tie mod because i was feeling it at the time liner lock g10 handle scales that great spider co clip and a lanyard i guess i was into that at the time as well this thing is absolutely no use um but really if i had to pick an knife to throw in the garage or something for those kind of beater knife tasks it would be this one uh kershaw dimension Again, FWK ruined finish. Nice. Titanium handles. The only knife with titanium handles that seems to be decently priced. This comes in at like 30 bucks or something. Um, cool design on the handles. Uh, pretty thick blade though. This originally had a stone wash. This is a plunge lock with a uh, speed safe mechanism in it. So it is assisted. Um, deep carry clip that goes on three corners of the knife. Uh, tip up, tip down on your right side and tip down on your left side. We're getting down to the end of the folding knives. Kershaw Fraction, another 2017 design. Exact same materials as the Flourish I just previously showed, but this is an Onzo design with KVT ball bearings. I have not uh, reviewed this one quite yet. I still need to carry it some. Um, I had a couple of issues that I'll definitely talk about, but overall, I think this might be a winner. I don't know. I've had some issues, so I might have to rethink that statement. But review of this one is coming up fairly soon. I actually kind of like it. Here is the Gerber Valaton, I believe. This thing is years and years old. Um, gave to me by, by my brother, so it's never leaving the collection. Um, did not serve me well because I didn't really carry it. It's a Gerber. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody really carries Gerber, so... <laughs> Um, I don't know which Victorinox this is. I'm assuming it's a classic or something of that sort. It's got a nail file, uh, a knife, and scissors, and then of course your toothpick. Um, and or the toothpick, the toothpick is gone, but the tweezers are there. But this is I found this in the drawer. I didn't even know I had it. And then lastly, something that costs like two bucks is a Topps knives survival sauce. So let's go ahead and jump into fixed blades. So for the fixed blades, let me start you off with a funny story. Um, do you guys remember when I tried to make that custom knife? And when I say custom, we'll use air quotes. I don't know if you guys saw those. Custom knife where you basically build a knife out of scales that you get sent with a blade blank. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't know what the hell you're doing and you try to do way too much at once. And then you get frustrated with yourself and quit before the project is done. So that probably will never be finished. Um, but I'd like to try it again sometime and actually take it a little bit more seriously. But let's get into... <laughs> production knives um starting at the bottom of the barrel let's go sog i mean come on sog the gambit uh glass filled nylon scales i believe this is like 7 cr 17 mov steel or something it's pretty soft um it's meant to be a budget karambit and it sucks it just does the steel's soft um the handle's fairly uncomfortable the sheath sucks uh that's just very poor levels of fit and finish and overpriced for what it is 
Um, the SOGS, what is this one? I don't even remember. The Field Pup 1, I believe it's the same steel as the previous one. A much improved handle, obviously, in that one. Uh, this is proven to be pretty decent. The sheath is much better. Uh, I like this knife for a couple of reasons. It's still not presenting the best value. It's still SOG quality, which is subpar. Always, always subpar. Every, anytime I handle a SOG. But... As far as SOGS goes, I think this has been my favorite so far, so I still need to get some more use with that, but expect a review of that eventually. This is the Schrade uh, SHF-16. This is a great substitute knife if you don't want to spend the, the money on an, an Azula or a Taibo from Topps. Uh, this kind of performs in that same role. Can be a neck knife, can be a little belt knife, super handy to have around, decent steel. It's 9CR18 MOV, um, nice Kydex sheath. Super handy, super convenient, super versatile, and it's like 19 bucks. Great knife. Um, again, another Schrade that I broke the micarta handle scale on. We'll definitely determine that as my fault. I was batoning wrong. Don't even ask if you guys didn't see that video. This is the SCHF 52M, aka the monster chopper batoner that costs $45 that has micarta handle scales that apparently break when struck with wood very hard and 1095 steel uh, nylon sheath with this thing with a pocket uh, this thing presents incredible value it's great bang for your buck and if straight only made stuff out of 1095 coming in at the 30 40 dollar price point like this they their company probably be doing really really well um here's my other cold steel knife this is the gi tonto and this is in my opinion a successful blade modification i heavily acid etched or mustard etched this tonto blade um, i wanted to give it that apocalyptic look the the grip now has tons of traction i added some uneven jimping not on purpose of course i tried to make that even and look how it turned out uh, but this i think this thing looks freaking sweet now that's just me uh, <laughs> i haven't really used this knife a ton this is uh quote unquote a apocalypse bug out bag knife that doesn't really go on my bug out bag but um, it was just a fun project and I actually had a lot of fun doing it. I would love to do all sorts of projects on cold steel 1055 blades if I had the time. I would love to just do stuff like that all the time. Um, this is the CRKT Ox, but you guys forgot I had this one. Um, I bought this in hopes that it would be a, be a great EDC fixed blade and I ruined it. Um, I was batoning some wood that I did not have any idea that had nails in it, so I bent and broke the crap out of the blade and then I had to have a friend resharpen it on kind of a motorized system and it looks a hell of a lot better than it did but it's almost past the point of me reviewing it because I've hindered the performance that much but I can tell you this if you're interested in the aux at all um, the quality is definitely subpar I mean the scales fell off or they loosened up so much that they almost fell off the sheath rattles like crazy the clip kind of sucks um, it's just very subpar and far far as levels of quality it's very hard to get a good fixed blade at a budget price because either the either the steel is bad either the sheath is bad or the handle is bad um so crkt kind of missed the mark with that one and then we get into the best fixed blades i have and that's tops this is the devil's elbow standard size this is a defense blade that i've been using as a a little utility knife that I don't really have a whole lot of use for in my systems because I'm not a knife fighter. Um, but still, great Kydex sheath, all USA made, 1095 steel, rotating spring belt clip. It's still a cool knife. It's still a Tops, and I like it. Tops Tybo. Um, neck knife, great Kydex sheath on this thing. Seen lots of use. Also paracord wrapped. Uh, USA made. I mean, these Tops knives are just top notch in quality and I love the crap out of them. The Taibo was riding on my neck for, I don't know, eight months almost exclusively every single day. It hasn't been retired, but I don't carry it as much as I used to. Uh, top Scandi Woodsman, a surprisingly amazing knife in a leather sheath that is, eh, it's okay. My car to handle scales, 1095 steel again, but this does not have a black traction coating. Made in the USA, proudly emblazoned there. Just phenomenal ergonomics and a modified Scandi grind that works insanely well. Here, one of my favorite blades of all time, and that's the Tops Cut 4.0. This thing seen 
ridiculous amounts of hard use and I actually filmed a testing video not too long ago that I might have uploaded by the time I upload this one I'm not sure but something similar happened as to the straight I broke a piece and the micarta handle scale off and I know tops uses quality material so the blame is definitely on me I'll make a video about it I'm sure but great Kadex sheath that comes with these belt loops uh, I believe they call this beta material you can kind of put them on any way you want it comes with two of them last to packs belt horizontal vertical carry whatever the heck you want this thing is amazing awesome blade shape great karambit style handle it's giving you the best of both worlds with that thing and then finally the dawn warrior i kind of go to beat the crap out of knife as well uh, my car to handle scale is 1095 super thick super rugged and super freaking awesome and I'll probably end the video here with this sound. That locks into that Kydex sheath like nobody's freaking business. I love the way these Kydex sheaths work from tops. Again, 360 degree rotatable belt clip. Just amazing knives, great prices, I think, for what you're getting. And that wraps my fixed blade collection up. So now you've seen pretty much all of my knives. I mean, that's probably 90, 95% of them. And you can see it's slimmed down a little bit, but I still have a ton. I'd like to sell some off, get some new blades because I'm kind of dwindling. I mean, I have lots of videos I need to put out, but there's not a whole lot of new knives rolling into the channel like there used to be. And of course, that's a whole lot of factors, but that's a different video. So thanks for watching guys as always. And remember, have fun with your knives.